be an overlooked fight this weekend. Uh, Milan Melindo managed to defeat Tirapong Utaila, a.k.a. Falan Sakhirin Jr., to uh, attain, to obtain the interim IBF World Light Flyweight Championship in a, what was a really a solid fight. A good boxing match between the two of them. Both showed plenty of skill. And um, this wound up being an interim title shot uh, mainly because of the fact that Akira Yagashi, um, the actual IBF light flyweight champion, um, the IBF, it appears, wasn't entirely sure exactly what Yagashi was going to do. Um, he d had a date penciled in for New Year's, for December 31st of this year, in order to um, have him fight somebody, but they weren't sure if he was going to be defending his title, his light flyweight title, or moving back up to flyweight, or potentially moving up to try and get a fourth belt up at super flyweight, try and uh, make, make the the four-way uh, championship run, similar to uh, his what his former rival Roman Gonzalez did. But um, it's looking like Yagashi, incidentally, is going to be fighting the winner of this bout, uh, Melindo. And um, just to cover the bout, I mean, it was a solid fight, very solid fight early on, uh, very much a, a tit-for-tat type, tit -tat type battle um, between the two of them. Um, Utaida definitely has a big height and reach advantage over Melindo. Utaida being five foot six, Melindo being five foot two. So Utaida definitely on the on the taller side for the 108 pound division. Um, and he has a 67 inch reach, which was a th three inch reach advantage over Melindo as well. Um, he was actually using his reach very well in the early rounds. I, th I thought he was uh, winning the early rounds uh, fairly cleanly, um, just doing well, sticking behind the jab. Um, doing using kind of a, a mid a mid range to long range type of uh, stance, try, trying to force Melindo to overcommit to his punches and catching him with a check hook and as well as a right hand, um, as he kind of leaned back or would kind of like lean back into the right hand. He almost did kind of like a, either a lean back or a slight step back as well as leaning back and and then firing off his punches as Melindo came forward. Um, it seemed though like um, Utaida I thought was getting a little bit impatient and possibly a little bit tired as it got into the middle rounds where Melindo started really ratcheting off a lot more combinations in order to try and um, just kind of engage Utaida in, bit, in a bit more of like a combination battle um, where Melindo's faster hands and just overall speed advantage I mean he, he had the faster foot work as well as well as um, faster torso movement yeah. Whereas Utaida tends to have a bit more of like a methodical, slower paced movement with his torso, albeit good footwork and um, fairly fairly good hand speed as well. Just uh, not quite the same level of hand speed that Melindo has in the combinations. Um, when Melindo turned it into a combination battle, he was winning almost every single time. He was able to kind of get on the inside, was able to shoot those short, sharp hooks um, to the body as well as to the head catch Melindo as he kind of leaned back a little bit too much and was kind of exposed, I mean, excuse me, catching Utaida as he was leaning back a little bit too much, exposing some of Utaida's um, defensive, I guess, neglig negligence, you may call it, on the inside. Whereas um, Utaida, a lot of the defensive moves he makes are really good for the mid-range and the long range, but when he's kind of uh, ducking down and um, hunching over a little bit, and it seems like he hunches over sometimes when he gets tired, uh, Melindo was taking uh, major advantage of that by shooting those just quick, sharp, um, shoe shining type punches but they were landing cleanly you know so even though they might not necessarily have been the heaviest handed things um, they were landing cleanly they were scoring points and I think that he, they were catching the judges eyes I, I definitely think they caught one of the judges eyes who um, scored at 117 to 111 the other two scored at 115 to 113 I had I had it a uh, draw I had it 114 to 114 at the end of the fight but I definitely can't argue with uh, Melindo winning I wouldn't necessarily argue with uh, Sakharin winning as well um, especially because even though Melindo really took over uh, it, or it looked like he was about to take over completely in the second half of the fight um, from the mid into the late rounds pretty much like the round Round five through round nine, Melindo was um, definitely fighting at his preferred pace as opposed to Utaida, where Utaida was trying to stalk forward but hunching himself and giving up his height a little bit too much. He was almost like crouching over so much that he was actually making himself shorter than Melindo was. But he was also waiting too long to set his feet and to fire off his shots as opposed to just letting his hands go and trying to hit Melindo. And I also thought that he was focusing on trying to land the right hand to Melindo's head a little bit too much where he found a better home for that right hand to Melindo's body. He was neglecting the body a little bit. Um, but um, in the championship rounds from round 10 through 12, I thought uh, Utada seemed to kind of catch a little bit of a second win and also kind of went back to doing what was giving him success in the earlier rounds where, you know, he was kind of shooting the check left hook as Melindo came forward and then also just um, shooting the right hand to the body 
and shooting the right hand upstairs after the after the left hook as well. Whenever Melindo would try to almost like lunge in a little bit too much with uh, those combinations that he was throwing, and I thought that he was able to um, get enough rounds to uh, get a draw on my card. But of course, you know they were fighting in the Philippines. Um, they had uh, one Filipino judge, one uh, Thai judge, and one neutral judge uh, from Japan. So, I mean, between the three of them, you know, the uh, fair scorecards, I'd say. Um, you know, uh, I'd definitely say the Filipino judge, the one that gave it 117 to 111, seemed to be a little bit more impressed with uh, the flashes, the, the flashy combos that Melindo threw, the, you know, a little bit of the shoe shining. You know, wasn't entirely the most effective stuff um, at times, but other times it definitely was the, the more effective work as well. Um, so you have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Melindo managed to earn himself a victory um, in a, just a tough fight against, you know, a tough, uh, a tough young contender. You know, a guy in Utaida who's actually a bit of a veteran in spite of the fact that he's only 23 years old. Of course, uh, Melindo's 28, um, has a bit more experience than Utaida. You know, uh, I think uh, Utaida definitely has uh, a little bit of ways uh, to go, um, you know, insofar as his skill is concerned and insofar as experience is concerned. I think that he could definitely grow uh off of this experience, and you know, he may become a champion uh, in the future as well. Um, you know, he definitely has the power to. Uh, he knocked out Katsunari Takayama. I mean, not, excuse me, not Takayama. He knocked out uh, Ryo Miyazaki, who was an undefeated champion at the time of the third round, in you know what was a brutal and uh, vicious upset uh, knockout victory. Um, otherwise, his only two losses were to uh, the aforementioned Katsunari Takayama, what was a close uh, technical decision loss um, that was stopped on a clash of heads. And uh, a unanimous decision lost to Takuma Inoue, who is now uh, a top contender at 118 pounds. He was actually going to be fighting for a world title against uh, Marlon Tapales for the WBO Bantamweight title on New Year's. But uh, Inoue wound up coming up with a hand injury, unfortunately, you know, similar to his brother Naoya. Um, but uh, that just goes to show, you know, that uh, Utaila, to, in order to beat somebody like him, you have to be a top-level fighter, which uh, Melindo certainly is. You know, of course, Melindo's only two losses were to um, uh, former unified champion Juan Francisco Estrada up at flyweight, and then back at light flyweight to uh, former champion Javier Mendoza. In a fight where it just seemed like um, Javier Mendoza's kind of slick southpaw tendencies, as well as just kind of the wildness of his right hand, and um, just the, the sharpness of his left hand, in spite of the wideness and wildness of his right hand, was really just catching uh, Melindo off guard. It's just like he couldn't really see the left hand coming. I find that um, is an interesting problem that a lot of orthodox fighters hand. They just can't see that left hand coming, and it was definitely the case for Melindo against Mendoza. Mendoza is actually a common opponent that Melindo has with Akira Yagashi, who he's, of course, going to potentially be fighting on New Year's Eve. Um, but whereas... Melindo seemed to have a lot of trouble really getting his own shots off on of Mendoza and seeing the left hand and the right hook coming from Mendoza. Uh, Yagashi pretty much just engaged in a in a toe to toe kind of war of attrition with Mendoza, was letting combinations fly like nobody's business, and was um, able to actually open up the same cut that uh, was initially opened up when Melindo fought Mendoza. It was actually a clash of heads that caused a cut over his left eye. Um, yeah, it seemed like the scar tissue hadn't quite healed um, over that left eye, and Yagashi was able to take advantage of that, cut him up over that left eye with punches. And, um, you know, as that blood uh, fell into his eye, Mendoza t started to tie a little bit, just the whole pace of the fight started to wear on him, and Yagashi managed to uh, get a, um, a pretty conclusive uh, decision victory over Mendoza, and what was a fantastic fight between those two. It's definitely uh, one to watch. Um, but in spite of the fact that it is a common opponent, I just think that the stylistic matchup may have been um, uh, it's a difficult thing to call, whereas, you know, Yagashi was able to win clearly, and Mendoza pretty much um, controlled and dominated uh, Melindo, I think that the Yagashi versus Melindo fight actually is a pretty even matchup. You know, I think that hand speed is fairly equal, foot speed is fairly equal. Um, I'd say Yagashi's foot speed is probably a little bit faster than Melindo. I think Melindo's technique is a little bit cleaner, a little bit, uh, he has a little bit shorter, sharper shots than what Yagashi tends to throw. He tends to be a little bit wide, a little bit more wild, a bit more of a Gamboa type um, fighter. Um, you know, the hands down, in and out, you know, kind of just leaping in and just improvising, going on the fly. Whereas Melindo tends to be a little bit more methodical. You know, of course, is, that, is his, uh, that is his nickname, uh, El Metodico, the Method Man, you know. And uh, so him versus Yagashi, I think, is going to be just a, a good clash of styles. Uh, and I think it'll be a hand speed battle. I think uh, both of them love to throw punches in combination. They're both on the short side for the division. Um, Yagashi just a little bit taller than uh, Melindo, but I do think that Yagashi holds a slight advantage in terms of just his improvisational ability as well as his athletic ability. I think that he's a little bit stronger 
than Melindo, and I also think that his stamina is better than Melindo. Melindo tends to kind of pick and choose his spots in order to kind of ratchet off his combinations. Yagashi pretty much just lets his fist fly um, with uh, with abandon. I mean, not even necessarily reckless abandon, but hey, he'll do that too. You know, he has a very solid chin. He's been lumped up and uh, busted up in the face um, quite a few times. You know, he got it got it done by Estrada, got it done by Mendoza, even though he won that fight um, by Ioka as well. Um, and so, you know, he'll probably take uh, his fair share of damage against Melindo, but I think that just his overall physicality will probably be just a tad too much for Melindo in their potential fight. But now I've gone almost off into uh, previewing the, the possible fight between them two. Um, it is penned in on BoxRec for December 30th, um, so I'm assuming that it's going to be happening. Uh, Yagashi's manager, was, uh, was it his manager or his promoter? Um, it was either his manager or his promoter, I can't remember exactly who was there live to watch Melindo fight Sakurin. So once Melindo got the decision, um, you know, they were, it looks like, ready to do that deal. And it's just a solid fight. It's going to be one in a number of solid fights. It's going to be eight total title fights between December 30th and December 31st in Japan. So it's going to be just uh, between four cards, eight title fights, um, going to be excellent action all the way around. And I think that the Yagashi uh, melindo fight may wind up being a show stealer, even though you have the likes of Nagi Inoue and Jonathan Guzman on those cards. And, you know, those are obviously the, the big, probably the biggest names on those cards, as well as Jezero Corrales, who, of course, uh, pulled off the big upset knockout of Uchiyama is looking to repeat that performance. But um, just overall, a solid win for Melindo. Um, kind of a tough loss for Utaida, but I think he'll be back. You know, I think, uh, before too long, he'll get another title shot. He's a young guy and he's, a, he's a bit of a veteran too. You know, he has almost 40 fights on his ledger in spite of the fact that he's only 23 years old. So he definitely has some improvement to do. Um, get back in the gym, work out the kinks, maybe work on that stamina a little bit. And he could, you know, potentially be a, a future champion, maybe a future great at the light, lighter, at the lighter weights overall, whether it's a light flyweight, flyweight or what have you. Um, for as for Melindo, you know, uh, I do like his chances against Yagashi um, in the general sense, although I do favor Yagashi to defeat him um, if they do happen to, to come against each other on December 30th. Um, you know, he didn't really take uh, too many uh, bad, bad lumps or shots in this fight with uh, Utaida, you know, maybe take a week off and then get right back in the gym and he'll be ready for Yagashi come uh, come New Year's time. Um, so, I mean, I think it'll be a solid fight between the two of them. You know, he just, he just, he definitely has to, um, have everything on point as far as being in shape. And I think he will be, you know, um, going from one fight back in the camp for another one. I think that he'll definitely be in shape. Um, you know, won't have any time to, uh, potentially, uh, you know, be too relaxed with his, with his cardiovascular, um, training and conditioning. So I think he'll be ready for what'll, uh, most likely be a very tough, gritty fight with Akira Igashi. Igashi makes pretty much every one of his fights um, that way, even when he's outclassed like he was against uh, Yoka and Chocolatito. So, um, solid win for Melindo, and I'm looking forward to the next fight. And it's always great to see um, the next fight already lined up. You know, a lot of times with a lot of the bigger name fighters, um, you don't necessarily, it's like they, they win a big fight, and then all of a sudden you forget about them for a couple months in the, before their next fight is even being talked about, nonetheless signed. But he's already ready to get right back into it. Um, a little over a month after uh, this recent fight with um, Utada, a.k.a. Sakurin, and he's ready to get it versus Yagashi, you know, uh, another title shot for him, and um, it's looking like he's going he's gonna to give it his all in order to win it this time. Third time's a charm for him, so that's what's up with uh, Melindo versus Sakurin, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, yeah, and also um, check out the description box, put the full fight in the link. Uh, excuse me, the food fight link in the description box. And, um, you know, it's a in very enjoyable fight. Good boxing from the two of them. Just a good uh, clash of styles. And, uh, you know, just enjoy. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.